Hey, what's up guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And this time I want to talk about spline advection. And where is it? This one. It's part two today. So it's already two weeks ago since I posted part one. So today you will learn how to make this beautiful effect. All right, and before we start with the tutorial, let me just quickly show you what you will get in July on my Patreon 3D Bonfire. Okay, so there's also some really crazy training. For example, you will learn how to make these beautiful patterns without any plugin. Plus this, where is it? This <laughs> beautiful liquid X particles typeface uh, font or however you call it. Okay, so the combination of both effects looks just gorgeous and I will show you how you can do it. Also, I just started with Marvelous Design and I will share my complete workflow from DAS to Mixamo to Cinema 4D, from Cinema to Marvelous and then from Marvelous to Cinema 4D through Octane. All right, so step by step we go through the whole process and we will create something like this, okay? Also, Spline Interaction, that's what you already get today on YouTube. So not everything is exclusive on Patreon. You know, I also share free stuff on YouTube. And I mean, this is really special. I mean, uh, just if you are curious how to make a production plan, I can also share this with you, okay? But otherwise, awesome, marvelous designer, Cinema 4D, Octane Techniques, and I think it's just amazing, okay? So think about it. But now let's just hop into Cinema 4D and get this tutorial going. I just forgot to mention this is me on Instagram, okay? Feel free to follow me here for my latest artworks. And of course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. But now, oh man, let's start with the tutorial. All right, I think here we ended in part one of this training. So we simulated this beautiful weaving pattern. I just go up to frame 100 or something like that, okay? So let it just simulate for a couple of frames, okay? So this looks beautiful. And I think I just want to work with this state here. So I just press C, make this one editable. And now basically I could kill everything else, okay? We just used this technique from part one to make this beautiful weaving pattern. But now we want to advect or destroy it with some exposure shock waves, all right? So let's just do that. Obviously, since exposure is particle driven, we need an emitter, okay? So put an emitter into the scene. We just see it a little bit better. Okay, so I think this one should be like a circle because we want to have a circular shock wave. This will work for us, all right? So if I put this one to 90 and set this one to a ring, just make this a little bit bigger here. Let's just see. So now this will shoot outward and you can see, wow, the scene is really slow. I mean, I have a brand new working machine, but this is really stuttering here. So I guess it is because of the XP trail deformer, which costs a lot of CPU. Let's check it without it. Okay, now it's smooth. So you can see we get this extra distortion on our splines, but honestly, I think you can live without it. Okay, so I just kill it. And now we are back to speed. Okay, I like this one, but this is not a shock wave. A shock wave should just be an initial pulse of particles. So let's just go to the emission here and set this one to shot. Okay. All right. So this is the most boring shock wave. So I think we need to change the parameters a little bit. So let's go to the speed. Let's just make the maximum variation here, something like that. Okay, this is cool. All right, and I think for particle rendering later, I would just switch the radius to a different number here and give it some variation. So we have different radii when we render these particles, okay? So I think this is good, but they shouldn't live forever. So let's just go to full lifespan, give them a lifespan of 10 maybe and a variation of 10. Okay, so this is already better. I just want to see this one as circles. All right, so you can see the radius of our particles. Okay, that's good. And let's see, did we change everything to our liking? I think we don't need to have so many, so put this one to 600. And I guess we should also go to extended data. I just pause this for a second. Go to extended data to physical data and give it some fuel, all right? So this will drive our, our explosion effect, okay? Without it, there would be nothing to ignite, okay? So this seems to be good. I think we... Just right click here, go to the X particle tags and give it a source tag, okay? So now you think something will happen, but that's not the case because we still need to go to dynamics and grab an explosion effect source. So inside of this container, we will simulate fire and explosions and stuff. So I just make it as big as our object here, something like that. 
maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, that's good enough. Now, just put this one inside of it. And I think I want to also rotate it like 90. Okay, and hopefully when we move it into our container, we will see some explosion stuff. Okay, all right. So this is the, the most underwhelming explosion I've ever seen. Okay, so that looks pretty, pretty underwhelming. So I don't know, maybe um, we could change the radius of these particles. So just go to emission. You can see when I put this to 20, I guess these ones will be bigger and simulate more fire. So maybe that it looks so weak has to do with the display mode. We could also go to exposure to the display. So if I reduce the transparency, I will see a little bit more of this explosion, but still, but still I don't like how this is looking. So maybe normally I don't do it, but today I just switch this one to grid, for example. Let's see, put this one to, okay, put it to a hundred already. Let's see. Yes, that's more to my liking. Okay. I think I can go down with the radius a little bit. So now this is really huge. Let's put it to 10. Okay. I still like it. That's cool. And maybe if you want to make it even more explosive and strong, you could go to the tag here and for example, change the velocity to 200. Now more of the particles velocity will be multiplied as a driver into this explosion stuff and you will basically get more of a rolling behavior and it will be just more powerful, okay? You could also put some pressure inside of it, let's see. Okay, now we're talking, okay, so this is really strong. Okay, I like it. But to be honest, the system is getting a little bit slower already, so I think we can go to explosion simulation to the solver and increase this to seven, for example, just make it a little bit less um, detailed because honestly, we don't need to have so much details here. Okay. So you can see now I'm back to real time and I just like how this is looking. I really like how this is looking. So <laughs> I guess I need to make a project where I render explosions as these dots. Okay. And it looks amazing. But anyway, now this is our explosion that we use as a driver to destroy or to activate these strings. Okay. So now they don't touch this at all. So I think I just want to move this one back, the explosion. Let's see, I could move it inside of it. But first I want to show you something. So we changed the cone angle to 90, but when I put it to 60, I think we will not get uh, movement outwards, but more like this. Okay, let's just see this one. Okay, so now 60 degrees, you can see when I put it to 30, then this looks like this. Okay, that's also cool. So, so first I wanted to leave this one at 90 and just place it inside of it. But now I'm thinking it could also be interesting to place it just a little bit behind it. Put this one to 50, for example, and then just push them forwards. Okay, so so I think my first shockwave will be up here. Okay. I just duplicate it, put it down here. And for example, I will say this one will be emitted at frame six. Okay. So let's just watch this one first and second. I guess I can just offset it a little bit more. So put it to 10. Okay. So I like it. But in that case, I just want to put this one to back to 90. All right and place this one really in the middle of this stuff here. I just make this one even bigger. Okay, so let's just see how this is looking. One and a second. Okay, so this could be interesting. Of course, you can place even more of them. Just make it more awesome and put more time into it. I just want to show you what you can do here. Okay, so let's continue with it. I think one last thing that I want to change in the explosion of X, I want to get rid of the gravity. So I don't want to have any gravity interfere with our direction of the movement. Okay, so put this one to zero. And I also want to go to the adaptive size here and put this one to 200, for example. So this adaptive box here, the blue one, will not at all interfere or cut my explosion down. Okay, so you can see this one is growing with the explosion, but sometimes this can be too small if this value is too small and cut into your explosion. So I don't want this at all. Okay, so I make this really huge and therefore the explosion will be as clean as it can be and nothing will be clipped or cut from your explosion. Okay, so this of course will increase the calculating time in this box because now 
more volume of the explosion of X will be calculated, but hey, my system is strong enough, so that's okay. All right, but I think you're wondering, okay, so this is nice and good, but you were telling me about destroying and attracting these strings, okay, and obviously nothing is happening here, so I guess you are still pretty underwhelmed by this tutorial, okay, so how about we just go to explosion of X to attraction and just activate it, okay? Now there will be something strange, okay, so you can see this is behaving in an odd way here, because now these ones, they will also be attracted by the explosion effect. So this will create a strange calculation circle that you want to prevent. So just select both of these emitters, go to modifier and just exclude the explosion from these ones. Okay, so they shouldn't attract themselves, but they should attract the particles that we will create now on these strings. Okay, so... It's a little bit confusing, but now, trust me, we will go to the attraction part. Therefore, because we want these strings to behave dynamic and will be pushed by this explosion, we go onto it, go to X particles tags, and now just use an XP dynamics, all right? This one will create particles on these ones, and therefore we can influence them, okay? Okay, this is already open, so just check the structural constraints. This will help the simulation. We can check and uncheck it later to see the difference, but for now, just trust me, this will improve the simulation, all right? So now go to the tag. All right, so the distribution is asking me where should this emitter that we will create in a second place its particles to calculate the dynamics, okay? Better than vertices is also vertex with midpoints. I'm not sure if it makes a big difference here, but uh, just use this one or vertices. I think that's also good enough, okay? We want these strings to be really soft, okay? Not rigid, like, uh, like some concrete or something, so place this one really low, okay? And the dampening we can also decrease to 0.2. I don't know if this is the magic number. I just got this number from Insidium to be honest, okay? And somehow it works. I guess the difference will not be crazy with one, but hey, just use 0.2. I think that's also a good number. Okay, so now add the emitter, okay? And maybe when I make this one invisible, can I already see these particles? Okay, so now you can see we created a lot of particles on these trails. All right, awesome. So I guess we are pretty close to our result. I just want to call this one at vector particles and let's see if they are already getting the effect from these shock waves. Okay, so this is already working. It looks a little bit strange. Let's just see it with the strings. No, I think this is working perfectly already. So let's just check it once more. Okay, so these ones, they will be pushed outwards. Okay, that's really cool. Maybe I just want to go back to my initial explosion here. It's this one. Of course, you could also name this one Shockwave 1, Shockwave 2. But I just went fast with this tutorial not to bore you with naming conventions. Let's put this one to a speed of 300. And I think now this one will be more brutal here. You can see that will be pushed further outwards. And basically... I guess this is the effect we are going for, okay? Let me just double check this one, okay? All right, I like it. I will just make the explosion temporarily invisible just to check this once more. I think because this one is pretty much aligned with the height of these ones, the result here is quite minimal. So I think I also want to push this one back. And I think because I like this forward movement, I will push this one to an angle of 30. Now let me just double check how this is looking. Okay, so now this will have a stronger impulse to the front. Okay, and I think I just want to make these particles bigger to make it even more uh, strong with more volume here. And I also want to increase the pressure to 150, for example. So now you can see this is more voluminous, if this is a right English word. I'm not sure about it. Let's see. So now this is a really strong effect here. Wow, okay. Obviously, you will have to fine tune this, but you can see now these strings, they are carried way further towards the front. So let me just make this one invisible. And obviously, they are just advected with the movement of this explosion, okay? With this rolling shock wave, okay? So beautiful stuff here, okay? I think I can share one more useful trick with you. So how about... We add some different colors to these ones because in the rendering this would just 
give you more variation and will just look awesome. So, so how about we just add a XP color, okay? So put a color into your scene and let's see, let's switch this one to gradient by parameter. And for example, okay, I would just add some random colors here. Just give me a second. If you already have some of them and you are bored to do it again, then you could also just, let's see, double the knots, okay? So now you basically have more of them and it will be more than amazing. Okay, let's see. Do we already have the effect? No. Okay, of course. It's not 2D8. We want to have it 3D linear mapped, okay? And now let's think about the axis here. I think the blue one should be the Z axis. So hopefully this will work if we just put this one to Z axis. And now the axis minimum. Let's just see. I just add a null here, move it over here. So you can see the furthest out point here is, um, is 450, for example, to plus 450, okay? So I just took this to measure it. So I guess when I put minus 450 here and 450 there, hopefully we will get some color mapping here. And that's exactly what we get. So you can see this gradient is resembled throughout our particles here. Let's just see this one. Okay, looks like some crazy candy, all right? So I like it. So if you already know how to render this stuff and make it beautiful, you can end this tutorial here and just say, hey, thanks, Marcus, subscribe to my channel and go to my Patreon, okay? But if you want to know how to make it beautiful, I can also share this with you, okay? So let's just fire up Octane. Let's start it, okay? Let's already put it to path tracing because path tracing is just more beautiful. It's real global illumination, light calculation. So this will just be superior to direct lighting. Put this one to 500, for example, GI clamping 20 and whatever. Okay, let me just put a sphere. We will use this one as a particle. Just put it out of your scene. Make it smaller, I guess. Something like three. Okay. And now let me think about it. These particles on our spline, we want to see them as spheres, okay? They should be some beautiful round particles here, okay? So therefore, just put an octane tag on it, go to particle rendering, say geometry, put the sphere inside of it. And um, I mean, even without a sphere, you get this gray sphere, but if you put some custom geometry inside of it, we can put the material on the sphere and therefore give it some different looks, right? So let's just create something like a glossy material here. Okay, where is it? Okay, so fire it up. Okay, now go inside of the node editor. I think you can already hear my computer. It's getting a little bit more loud because it's rendering with my two graphic cards. Okay, so now we want to transfer these colors that we get with the XP color into our material. And therefore, there's a special node. It's called instance color. Okay, so just drag it here, put it into the diffuse. Okay, that's nice. We don't want to have a source file. We want to have some particles from an emitter, okay? And I guess, therefore, can we just put this one inside of it? Okay, I'm not sure. Let me just close this one. Let me see it. All right, obviously, this one is still gray because I think we just need to put the material on our sphere. And there you go. We have some crazy particle candy here, okay? <laughs> And you know what? This looks pretty ugly. So I guess I just want to fire up the settings here. Go to, where is it? To environment. Make this one black. Okay. Just shake the scene a little bit until it reacts. All right. Now I just want to put an area line inside of the mix. Go up with it. Rotate it like, let's see, 90 degrees. That's always a good solution. Okay. So just move it a little bit further here. Okay. So we have some light from the top. I think this is pretty intense. So just move it a bit up somewhere here. Okay, it's working for me. We could make it more interesting by duplicating the light, move it down here and use this one, for example, as a backlight. Therefore, I just rotate it to 90 degrees, put it to this angle. I just deactivate the first one to see this one better. Okay, so if this is also white, this would be just boring okay so give this one like a red tint okay so this is pretty intense then just make it smaller okay so now we have something like a red backlight and if we just place a camera look through it i also want to change the aspect ratio so get rid of these gray borders to make it square 
okay so that feels better for me okay so now just go closer with your camera and i also like to change the focal length to get some more uh, concentrated look i would say you can see this is bothering me that these lights are visible so just go to visibility uncheck these ones okay so now we have particles here and you know what i also want to get rid of the grid and the work plane here just to keep my viewport uncluttered all right so these are our strings with the glossy material i think they are way too glossy with i guess zero roughness okay so just roughen this one up to get a better uh, distribution over the over the sphere okay so now this is more soft i like this even more okay activate the light from the top okay uh, still still underwhelming result but we're getting there okay i mean this tutorial is not about making the most beautiful rendering because obviously you just have to use this technique and make your own render right but you can see when i activate the aperture here this is already getting more interesting okay so i like it and now let's just simulate it a little bit so we get this beautiful attraction here just let it simulate i just pause it here give me the focus picker put this one into the focus and basically i mean this is it okay so this is the technique and i'm pretty sure you can make this into the most amazing rendering just um, find a light setup that is working also play with the radius of these spheres so when i put it to one obviously you will get a whole different look here put it to 10 i think this will be crazy so i guess the magic number would be something like two or maybe one of course you could also add the spline into the mix so make this trail visible now it's still not visible in the rendering so just right click here and go to the octane tags put an octane tag on it and now let's say render this one as hair for example okay now you can see these strings here okay that's nice i think i just want to make them more soft okay i can see a lot of edges here so if you don't like the the edginess of your splines just go here i would say put the b spline here and set this one to uniform now this is perfectly smooth okay and you could put another material on the string but overall this is the technique and i guess you are able to turn this into something beautiful um, just work with the technique and make it amazing okay so thank you so much for listening and um, yes see you in the next training have a nice day bye guys